Hey, are you enjoying this show here on the Sorgatron Media Network, uh, straight from Pittsburgh, PA? Did you know there's a bunch of other videos coming from Pittsburgh, and there's one source where you can find everything Pittsburgh-based, so you can represent the Steel City and see people who do represent the Steel City. Go to our friends over at PittsburghOnVideo.org, a big aggregator of these, this great stuff coming from the Steel City on video to you, wherever you are around the world. That's PittsburghOnVideo.org. Go check it out. Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cats, we're talking about Microsoft, BlackBerry, do they have a future? We talk about robots, we talk about foam automation, so much more with Chilla and Chachi. Awesome Cats. To the awesome class, the place where we talk tech and get geeky and have some fun. I'm uh, Mike Sorg here in the studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's a hockey night, but we're here anyways. We're, we're only we're only about half an hour in. Maybe uh, we'll probably lose Chachi to the game, but other than that, we should be working out just fine, right? So with us is Chachi. He's hey, monitoring the game. Up? He's monitoring the game. Oh wait, you did you did rearrange a bit. I did. I moved my desk completely. Wow! Um, you were kidding. It was it was up against the uh, the wall with the window, which is why at some hours the light looked great. Um, <laughs> but um, when the light looked great, it was shining in my eye, so I couldn't see when I was playing games. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad. So, what you got going on there? This is a good setup yeah. for you. I got so. some light up here in this corner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it'll go away shortly. But you still got a light in front of you, it looks like. Well, I turned on the uh, desk spotlight thing. Good, good, good. Just the, uh, you know, the, the basics. The basics of, of video. Um, the, the producer likes it when I have light. Yeah, the, the producer why. likes it when we can see you. Um, yeah. And also, I, and you can see uh, you can see a little bit in the corner there. We're, we're, we're trying something new for those technically uh, know-howed out there. Uh, we're, we're using uh, Google Hangout, actually, instead of Skype this week. So uh, yeah. we, we've been having some issues. Uh, Skype decided not to see any of my cameras anymore. Uh, it was the, the video that feeds back into so Chachi can see that we see him and or whatever I put on screen and, you know, who the camera's on and everything like that. So it got really frustrating. And actually, one of the Skypes just stopped working entirely. Like, every time we called anybody, their video wouldn't come through but works fine on our computers. So, um... So we, we just dropped one, that one guy on that very same computer in the Hangout, and it worked fine. So uh, so giving that a shot this week for uh, this and all the rest of the shows we do here on Tuesday night. Uh, but uh, one guy that's not on uh, Google Hangout, he's, he's here with us in the studio, not expecting to have a couch all to himself, <laughs> is the Chilla. It's very comfy. I think ne next time I'm going to like lay out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that, or we need to get a hammock. A hammock. Studio oh, hammock. Man. I would love a hammock in the studio. Chachi's jealous. I am. I want to <laughs> step. We're getting a hammock. Chachi, pri All right. Pri price hammocks for me. We'll figure it out. I guess. Amazon.com. Amazon.com. Wait, where, how much is a hammock? And do they have Prime? Oh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> we did some, like I got what did I get? Uh, it's like a contraption for my back patio. That's a seat and it's storage and it's made by Rubbermaid, and it was it was pretty much seventy five dollars cheaper and it was Prime. I'm like, how could I pass this up? I just I'm still just giddy because I bought a lawnmower on on Amazon, and I was so happy to have a giant box on my stoop, and realizing <laughs> like man. I just made it back like half of that eighty dollars I dropped on Prime this year. You know, uh, it, it's it's just ridiculous. Okay. Um, this episode brought to you by well, Amazon. We're gonna Prime. need one. We're gonna need a hammock that uh, has its own stand. Okay. Um, because you don't have trees in your back in your basement to hang up. No, there's but a, have, like, wait. There's a metal pole. Is there? Here. There's a pole. There's a there's there's a, some nails. I mean, we could probably do something if we wanted to. There's already enough stuff hanging you know, from the ceiling. We could do. Well, I found a, a collapsible one for forty dollars. Okay. All right. 
For, forget the tech news. We're figuring out this hammock situation <laughs> in the studio. That's that's how we're going to roll this week. I'm thinking um, you could screw a hook oh, up yeah. into the, the cross beam over here and hang it to the pole. <laughs> Now, people are like wondering how the studio is set up. Uh, <laughs> um, but hey, yeah, this is this is your awesome cast. We're going to talk tech. Uh, we're here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern p.m. Wait, I said that twice. Huh. Uh, but yeah, I, and also check us out. That's at live.sogertronmedia.com. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter. You can drop us a line at contact at awesomecast.com. You can also join us on Google+, Facebook, and the like. Uh, send us our comments. Send us stories that you want us to check out. Anything you've got an opinion on. Anything that you completely disagree with us or more likely Chachi, just let us know. Right, Chachi? Hey, if you disagree with me on anything... That's completely fine. Ch- I, Ch- I, Ch- I allow it. Oh, good. Oh, good. You're getting better than you were this morning when you were uh, taking it to the transit system on Twitter. Oh, you know what? Screw the transit system, okay? <laughs> Thank you they for censoring. <laughs> Thank you for censoring. Oh. <laughs> and what if they, what they, they, they told you to call them, right? Yeah. Why would you have a, a, a freaking Twitter account if you're going to make them call anyhow? I don't know. Did you? Did, did you? No. Because by the time they responded to me, I was on a different bus. Yeah, yeah. That stinks. Well, at least they got something going on. At least they, they know directly how, how bad it is, you know. Oh, I um, let them know several times how bad they are. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. So, all right, let's get into it with our uh, thing of the week, awesome thing of the week. Who wants to go first? Anybody go else? First. You go first. Go ahead, I'll Josh. Go first. What do you got? Um, my awesome thing of the week is an article that I posted on insertcointobegin.com today. Okay. Um, there is a company who got their hands on a uh, 3D printer. Ooh. And so they used it to model and print out all of the items from uh, the original Legend of Zelda. Nice. Um, everything that you collect in the game is available is game. for game? purchase Today, on their really... website, which is uh, HyruleFoundry.wordpress.com. Um, but, I mean, it's everything. Every little item that you're able to collect, you can buy, except for the potions. Right now, they're having a problem working out the potions. Um, apparently, because of the way the potions are, they have to figure out how to hollow out the the clear plastic model that prints out, so they can put the uh, the colored in it, the colored innard in. Was it? So I'm looking at the one picture at the top. Is it? Is that the blue potion in the back? What's the blue thing? That's a bomb. Okay. Um. Uh, did, did you? And then of course you posted the video, which is apparently a fire breathing piranha. Oh, that's a different. That was it, originally the post was going to be called uh, uh, "Fun Things for Today," um, but I spent more more of the post on the the Zelda items than I did um, anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the the uh, what he did was he created a uh, a six foot tall um, fire breathing piranha from Super Mario Brothers that actually uh, spits fire. Nice. Um, I, I forget how he did. Oh, the the outdoor fire was done with, uh, I believe, hydrogen and creamer. What? Uh, creamer. Uh, fun fact: uh, the uh, the creamer that you use at restaurants mm-hmm. that come in the little plastic containers. Extremely flammable. That, that makes me feel real safe when I'm I putting know. that in my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> when that's all we use at home, I'm gonna be like, "We had no more of this. We're, we're getting the normal stuff." <laughs> what? Is, what's in there? It's supposed to be half and half. Half is milk. What's the other half? No, the, 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 the creamer. It's the creamer that you powder. get at diners isn't half and half. No, is it the it's liquid? Just, is it the liquid in the plastic container, or is it the powder in the pack? I believe it's the liquid in the plastic okay. container. So I'm still good with my powder. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. you're good with your my powder. My stomach's not going to um, explode. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, it, apparently the stuff is extremely flammable, um, and so yeah, he, he uses that to mix in there, and then um, 
Uh, the the indoor. <laughs> The indoor flames <laughs> the that are completely flames, safe, mind you. Is, yeah, is, uh, let me, uh, he said that if you're going to do it indoor, uh, he said to not do it indoors first off, mm-hmm. um, unless you have like a, a designated uh, steel studio type location. Um, but he said that if you're going to do it, make sure the ceiling is over 10 feet tall. <laughs> Um, but uh, it, it's else? done with butane. <coughs> oh wow! So he has it. There's a little trigger system in there that uh, will light the flame, or uh, has a flame lit in there. But uh, when he triggers it, it'll uh, let some butane go, and it'll create a little fireball inside. Hmm. Um, but he said that uh, that was his. Uh, I believe it was his sixth or seventh attempt before he got it right. Um, And he said that failure on such a project means that you lose the entire project. Wow. (laughs) He said that he lost a couple flowers in the process. Yeah, because you make the thing and then you you like try to see if the mechanism works and then it just catches on fire. Right? Yeah, right. So, wow. Um, Well, let's go from that creative project to uh, uh, my my pick of the week here. We've talked about Raspberry Pis a good bit on this show, right? And it's been a yep. while since we had a good Raspberry Pi story. Uh, so there's a Kickstarter going on that uh, they're trying to do a mechanism to attach a Raspberry Pi uh, to interface with LEGO Mindstorms. And of course, LEGO Mindstorms are basically the basis for kids and adults learning robotics these days, right? So... Basically, what what you need, and I don't know how Mindstorm typically works uh, as far as like that mechanism goes, but the idea here is your uh, Pi becomes the brain, and and now what what will happen is you have this board. It has some quick access stuff. I'll see if I can pull up the part of the video where they show it. Um, it has some quick. It has some quick access ports. Uh, that'll bridge that and give you a nice case that you can plug the, you know, Legos, like the standard Lego holes uh, to attach through it. So the idea is now for you to program your robot, you can use programming. But how do you normally program them? I think Mindstorms has their own kind of software for it. Like you load it on your Windows machine and you can do this. Now you could use, you know, anything that will run on Raspberry Pi. They're actually, one of their stretch goals, I believe, is to uh, write a scratch programming library, which is the uh, MIT Kindergarten uh, Labs uh, project to, for kids. It's like this color-coded programming thing i don't think we talked about it on this show but i've been looking into it a little bit it's it, it's really cool because it's it's literally like 10 year olds learning math instead of learning algebra they learn how to program which is basically um, which is basically algebra, the same thing basically a lot of it, it was this, this i think it was a, a ted talk i saw it and it was just blew my mind so this idea that you can do this and and I just like this idea dawned on me with this project that is like my kids are going to learn robotics in school like that is going to be the shop class. You know what I mean? Or that is going to be the math class or they, where they're going to learn programming like this if these things keep growing the way they are. And if not, I will find a school that will. Well, I think it makes it a lot more interactive. I mean, for, mm-hmm. for kids doing something like this, they feel like they're creating something. They're actually getting something out of it. I, I don't think it's. It's not sitting there with a paper and pencil. I think in today's world, that's a little mundane and boring. Yeah, of course. So when, when, especially when we have options, like, I mean, that's that's why you have stuff like the Raspberry Pi project. Uh, you know, a lot of us, you know, or you know, Rob and, and guys like that get them to to tinker with, or as um, you know, great little solutions for whatever project that they need just a little computer for. Um, when do you look at it too? I mean, by the time they're in high school, they're I mean, not back. I mean, back way back in the day when I was in high school, it was all <laughs> Texas Instruments, the the big graphing calculators. Yep. People were writing programs for that. I mean, I remember having Duck Hunt on my TI. <laughs> A lot of people had Tetris on theirs mm-hmm. and everything. 
I mean, I could um, see, I could see this being a, a stepping stone towards. But still, even that, next... like, like unless you were in a, in a school where they were like passing them out for everybody using class, nobody bought one unless they were like really into math, right? Yeah, I mean, I we, mean, there, ours, there, there's a big barrier there. Ours, unless... ours were um, given out in class, but see now, Texas Instruments has the app for the iPad and the phone, mm -hmm. so you can turn your phone for like a third of the cost of the calculator. Yeah. So your phone could be that calculator. Yeah, and half these kids have that anyways. Mm -hmm. You know. And then you Bluetooth up upload your Raspberry Pi program to your wouldn't that to be your something? Mind, Mindstorm and wouldn't that wouldn't that be something though that now now we're in that it, it, you have you know things like that where you know mom dad I want an iPhone so I can you know talk with my friends and chat with my friends and whatever now it's mom dad I want an iPhone so I can use it for school. You know, and our, plug it into your car, and I'll fix your car for you. <laughs> there's that too. Yeah, there's that too. I, I haven't gotten into that. I'm waiting for that thing to release. Um, but um, but I, it just you know, and and the idea of like this robotic stuff. We're getting to this age where 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 kids are are able to do programming at a very young age that uh, in ways that appeal to them. And I'm hope you know hopefully this gets into the curriculum for a lot of schools. Um, now to the point where Mindstorm is like these robotics for kids, you know, uh, it, it's a far cry from the old uh, science projects. You well, know? And I don't think we're too far off from that. I know I, I have a friend at work that he's a little crazy about making sure all of his machines in his house are upgraded and whatnot. And all of his kids have, they all have desktops. Yeah. So quarterly he has a thing on his calendar that he makes sure he goes around and makes sure windows updates been run all their antivirus signatures are up to date etc <laughs> well the last two two times he's gone around the computers haven't even been turned on and he was the last one to log into them wow because they have ipod touches they i mean they have other devices and that's their mm -hmm. means of communication entertainment gaming everything they do they're doing on a tablet. The uh, one has a Kindle Fire. I think the other one has an iPad. But and they they use mm -hmm. the family computer for Word to type a paper, cool. and then they're they're m moving on. That's taken. That 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 is telling you exactly what's happening in the computer industry too. Then, um, but it, really, I you think about that. You know, uh, nobody nobody's sitting there in front of the TV just watching TV. They have to have a screen in front of them. Who wants to sit in front of a desktop and just do the desktop? You know, and, and especially when laptops are so prevalent and these little devices, it's just distributing all that stuff. I, you know? I, I think that it'll be interesting to see. I, I hope this really takes off because I'm hoping that they can bring more programming to the tablets and phones, etc. I know Chachi does a lot of his updates. For insert coin, I think from he said from his phone, but I'm looking for more tools that allow me to do a lot more web dev and stuff like that from the tablet, from the phone. Mm -hmm. Build me, build me an interface so then I can build my own interfaces. So, so this is this goes back to the idea of is the iPad a creation device? See, I, now, now we're it's becoming a thing where it's a content creation device more and more because it has the cameras, because it has things like uh, oh, what's uh, hold on, I have it on here. Uh, Friends of the uh, the pod camps, uh, Boss Chuck. Um, their I mean, app that, is awesome. That, yeah, that 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 present thing. I have not had the opportunity to do it. I'm kind of worried about doing it on this old iPad because it kind of crashes out on me every once in a while. Um, but that idea that I can just take this iPad, connect, okay. There were guys, we were at WrestleCon, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, WrestleMania weekend. And there were these other, I don't, and some of them, I think they were for radio, to be honest. But look at some of the stuff they had. Uh, radio, podcasts, whatever they were. You would have two guys. One guy's walking around with his iPad, right? So he he's, I see him take around with his iPad, and I got a cord coming over to a microphone. It has a little, you know, one of those boxes around it for whatever, which mm -hmm. we got to get one of those for Sorgatron Media, by the way, Josh. Priced out on Amazon for me, too, all right? Uh, <laughs> he's just looking at me. <laughs> what are we getting? <laughs> well, those little boxes, like they have for IWC and RWA, like for, oh, okay. for our microphones. I'll be right back. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> so they so they just have this, and I, I didn't get a chance to look at the software and... You know, but it, this is a podcast studio, you know? I'm thinking about, like, for my one client, I would bring in, like, a, a board and a couple of these microphones and stands and all that stuff, and we tried doing a podcast day. And and then I just started thinking, like, man, why don't I just, like, grab my iPhone, 
go like hey can you have a 10 minute conversation with me podcast why aren't we doing that like in what why am i trying to do things the hard way you know in well actually room? after that after that i actually went out and grabbed the thumb the the usb uh thumb port it's a powered usb port that you can then that he was talking about in the boss jock mm -hmm. uh podcasting from your from your tablet and if, if for those wondering that this is all available if you go on look for podcast pittsburgh on youtube and there's the uh, uh how to podcast from your ipad right. was the session all that stuff's up there you can go listen to it the guys from lips and actually actually mm -hmm. uh who actually they have uh they do our um app for a wrestling mayhem show uh really good service I, I use them for one of my clients and everything um so uh the look pittsburgh Pittsburgh born company actually, and so, we, which is really awesome. We've been doing some testing about how to replace, potentially replace PCs with with tablets and, and whatnot. Yeah, and, and actually, we have a guy, and now he's more, a little more technical than most. So he's he's using his iPad, and he supports our routers, and he oh, can wow. tell he can tell that in, and he has a keyboard. Yeah. And that's how he works. Yeah, that's all. He and the great thing about this is it's ten hours of battery life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have network connectivity, and I can throw it in a small bag. If I'm at dinner and I get paged, if I have to do something, I'm not completely interrupted. I'm not waiting seven minutes for my laptop to boot up and get all the network connections that right. you guys need and yeah. tunnels and all that stuff. Right. right? I mean, it, it just makes. I think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think, like, like I trying to pull back out my surface tablet to play around more with that you bring it over every time you do the I, show I, I do and <laughs> i and my big thing is i miss the mouse like i love the mouse on on the tablet i i like the form factor it sits on my lap you know we had that conversation earlier <laughs> this is a I, laptop it I, does I, I work for it you on my lap. it works great but the problem is is every application quasi sucks I mean, I, the Twitter app never updates properly. The live tiles don't work. There's there's no real good photo editing app. I like to I like to post a lot of photos from different things. Mm -hmm. it, it's the, but the form Pardon factor. Hmm? Uh, would you like square or triangle? Ooh, those triangles are fancy. Yeah. Although the square part fit more with our more square logo. But can uh, you make the, it? Can, is nineteen dollars. Oh wow! Cool. All right, we'll um, probably it. per. But oh, ouch! That, that's that's not the bad. cheapest I found. That's not bad. Um, the triangle ones are twenty one dollars. Could you do the triangle with like the S sticking out, like die cut out of the top? <gasps> That'd be fun. Well, I mean, the triangle is the same as the the square. It's just in a shape of a triangle. Like the sides are flat. Yeah, but I'm thinking so, like have the triangle and then have the S stick out of the top. Yeah, and, I don't know. Oh, uh, and for the record, if you were curious, they're called microphone flags. Flags. Okay. Yes, I don't know why, but it's an official name. We can ask Jim Loki when he comes back on the show. Sorry, you're. <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> I'm just saying triangle. Triangle. <laughs> yeah, and Chachi, you're very right. A triangle is not a square. Well, yeah. <laughs> you win. I know my shapes. Wow. All right. From from the uh, the working around the laptop or, or the tablets to uh, entry, the evolution of the key is coming. Yeah, this and is, I, this I threw is this your out pick? there. Yeah, this is my pick. I cannot wait to get this device it's it's supposedly going to launch mid-may which it's now mid-may mm -hmm. so it's a bluetooth 4.0 enabled lock for your house mm -hmm. um it connects to your smartphone right now obviously it's only a smartphone it's right now it's 4s and 5 iphone only um i'm guessing they're going to come out for android with devices that support the bluetooth 4.0 uh protocol but they also have a, a key fob you can put on your key. Okay. And what it does is you, you all you have to do is walk up to the lock, and you tap it, and it scans to make sure that the device is in, in within distance, and it'll unlock. So it's kind of like bump. 
It's it's like bump for your locks at home. And for those of the bump kind of way, we, we, this is this is through lots of Eric's experimentation while we we're drinking at pod camp meet and greets. <laughs> um, like what happens when six people bump at the same time? The guy across the room gets one. Um, but the cool thing I like but, is... But, 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 wait, 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 I want to explain the concept real quick first before we get into it for those that maybe don't know about Bump. Uh, basically, the idea is you bump your phones, and it's through between like the network and the GPS. It figures out, oh, these two things happened, uh, did the bump motion at the same time. They're the closest things to each other. That's how they connect. And they say, okay, I'm going to send... And then they transfer some and kind of data. And then it transfers data, whether it be context pictures, whatever whatever that may be. Now, Now, this system, though... Well, you know, it, it, come on, Bump wasn't the first one to do it. We all know it was a Samsung Galaxy <laughs> with near-field communication. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, okay. Does you, did your phone do the thing? Uh, my phone does the thing. Hey, hey, when are we going to do that? Uh, the iPhone's going to do the... I mean, they've been doing them since 2009, <laughs> Our phones have been bumping since 2009, right? <laughs> I mean, it's been around forever. <laughs> Sorry, Samsung. No, no, but one of the other interesting things I see is that I can send temporary e keys. I see this. Like, so, <coughs> like, they have in here, like, you send one to the dog walker. I'm like, hey, uh, you know, Chachi's going to house it. Instead of, like, me leaving him a key, you know, I say, uh, uh, you know, here. And you, you, he has access. Mm -hmm. So, th that's cool. I, I think it, it could be very useful. And I'm, I'm but wondering. But I have a key already. Hypothetically, Chachi, what if I didn't want you to always have access to my house? Oh, and he can he can revoke. You can revoke. You can give someone permanent keys or temporary keys, and anyone huh. who has a permanent key, you can revoke them. And somehow it knows the interesting thing that there. I was reading the frequently asked questions. Some know somehow it knows directional prox proximity. Okay. So, Somehow it knows the between the front of the lock and the back of the lock. So when you're in your house, if you lock your door and someone walks up to it, it knows you're on the other side. If someone were to tap it to unlock it, it won't unlock because it knows you locked it from inside the house. How does that work? Well, now, wait, 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 wait. So how does that work if... You have multiple people, like, you know, I have one in, you know, on but my if, phone but and if my you wife had has one, I, I, But the fear is that if I'm in my house and I lock the door, yeah. my phone was is within proximity of the door. Yeah. So anybody could walk up to it because my phone's in proximity. I don't have to do anything on my phone when I tap the lock. Okay. It's based on the fact that my phone is in my pocket and I tap the lock. It knows because my phone's in my pocket to unlock. But then if I walk in the house and I'm standing in my kitchen, which isn't that far from the front door, mm -hmm. and I lock the door and someone else walks up and taps it, my phone's still going to be within oh, proximity wait. of oh, the oh, you know, okay. I, you know what I'm missing? I thought you were tapping the phone. No. You're actually just tapping, tapping it with your lock. finger. Yeah. You happen to have the phone on your person. I, that's why I thought it was like bump. No, I thought we were actually <laughs> tapping it with the phone. That's why I looked at you funny when you first explained this thing. I'm like, okay. why am I going to hit my lock with the phone? That's weird. No, you're just, you just tap. Okay. There's, okay. A, there's a the second picture down. Okay. We're, 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 or, no, the first picture down. It's the first picture. And where there the person's these, touching. And there were the motions when you first load this. Yeah. And it's just like the hands up and your phone's just in your pocket. I was like, okay, well, I didn't. I understand why the creepy hand was crawling up there. And it glows blue. I, I like things that glow blue. <laughs> and it glows blue. It's a nice now, calming. This is this color. is like the next step for you because you you you're, you're somebody that has had like uh, the most interesting in, uh, 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 experimentations in home automation. Now in two places since you've moved to a mm -hmm. house where you can do whatever the hell you want to it. Exactly. So I can't wait for that. <laughs> I, I and I said this the other night while we were drinking. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to do I want to do a tour of your house and what you've implemented. And, and give me point. give me another month. Give me another I'm, month. I'm really close to voice activation. I think that could be like a pretty fun, uh, uh, you know, awesome cast special or something. We could we do could you do. could do a remote. I mean, mm -hmm. we have I have room. <laughs> Set it up. We'll, we'll, we'll bring the awesome cast over. Yeah, maybe maybe. But uh, but no, I think that's an idea because I, I think I think uh, people if they listen to this show they're probably interested in stuff like that and you you do the most interesting stuff with your house. I I remember getting 
Uh, my my first like look at it was uh, we had uh, when we got our IBM Aptiva from Radio Shack in I think 1997. They gave you a IBM Home Director. Okay. Where it you know it had you know it has a couple plugs and... has a couple plugs. Uh, I I you know and it was just like the, the computer was in my room, so I I got my lamp to turn on from my computer once, and that was about it. You know. I, I have the the lights downstairs turning on by voice. <laughs> but I'm running into a problem because I'm using Bluetooth, a Bluetooth headset. Mm -hmm. And when you go out of range of Windows 7 with Bluetooth and you come back, it auto disables um, voice activation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do some testing with what is it? Dragon naturally speaking. I think that might. Solve and and you are. I mean, I mean, you're you're on the you're at that point where you're 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 checking out the bleeding edge of this thing. You're troubleshooting it. Someday this will be figured out. Mm -hmm. when, you know, I think your cable companies are starting to get into it. You're seeing stuff from like AT and T, AT and T, which is that automation or I, I know they were doing like security or something. They're doing security, but you can turn on your lights from your house. You can you can. They don't have anything to unlock your doors as you walk up, but no. it it has timers for lighting. It has it, it knows how to uh, how the lights are hooked up so, in the it, house. You know, you know, you know. There was a, there was an interesting. I think they were talking about it on one podcast. They're like, "Well, that's interesting. What happens when you're late on your uh, on your cable bill? Do they lock you out of your house?" <laughs> You know, that'd be interesting. Knowing as ruthless as the cable companies can be when you're late, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what does the pirate have to say about all this? <laughs> I, I don't think he's he's muted. I don't. Did you mute yourself, baby? I I I think he's muted. I don't know what happened to him. Oh, we'll there see. we go. There he is. I muted myself. I forgot I muted myself. <laughs> I found all this stuff just laying around in Google. <laughs> I'm like, huh. Well, at first it was a crown. I'm like, oh, there's a pirate hat. And I'm like, oh, there's the eye patch to match. I'm like, holy crap, I can give myself a full beard. Hey, I forget you don't hang out and hang out with us uh, on Monday nights to discover all this stuff. Um, no, and the cool thing is it follows you. <laughs> like it, how it, did it, it calibrate does its to best. Head? Uh, it, it does, yeah, it does like head tracking. Yeah, it does its best to uh, follow your your head. Yeah, yeah, they've been doing this for a while in uh, Google Hangout. It's just awesome. Yeah. I'm having fun. Welcome. Hey, look, birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, well, okay. I'm gonna go so, uh, put on a different outfit. I'll be right back. Well, Google Hangouts gonna make the podcast that much more interesting, right? right. Um, all right. Let's get into some news. <laughs> oh no. Um, speaking of, well, you would say you, you talk about your Windows Surface tablet there, Chilla. So um, we, we we do have an official confirmation that uh, uh, Microsoft confirms uh, Windows 8.1 official name. For blue is the official name for the blue update we've been hearing about, and it's going to be free for uh, Windows 8 users. So <laughs> this isn't going to be. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no, save that for the Google story later. This is great. <laughs> this is this is going to be horrible for the audio people. Um, so, uh, <laughs> damn it, Chachi. <laughs> Uh, so the, this so so really this in the long run replaces what we used to know as service packs. Yeah, it replaces service packs, but I think Microsoft had to answer to the users that were extremely unhappy. Mm -hmm. So normal service packs have been more along the lines of security fixes, cumulative updates. Nothing nothing that was like a real change. Feature. Like they would they would implement the latest version of installer, which is their program that installs other programs. So it it was nothing that the user saw. So yeah. it wasn't like you were getting new feature functionality. You weren't you weren't even getting new themes. You you mm -hmm. were lucky if you got a new background. Yeah. And some new wallpaper. This from what the the way they're making it sound is you're getting you're gonna get new feature functionality and they're going to also change the way the OS may work. So they they've talked about bringing back the start button, but they're not bringing back the start menu. Yeah. To ring back the button to activate Metro. I, I've heard they're going to release more API 
type stuff for developers to use. It'll it'll more closely align the the phone, the PC, the RT tablet. But of course, they're doing it's really a different kind of uh, operating system at this point, where they're 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 breaking new ground. They need to be responsive on this stuff. They can't let that that functional stuff that may or may not be working sit for three four years while they get another version together so i think this is an answer to that in the long long run too yeah i i just i i haven't seen enough guts of what they what they what uh, they're doing what they're doing yeah which i mean we're we're what a month we're a month we're a month out from public preview isn't their thing in june i think so I think I think they have a they have an announcement coming out in June for their their, yeah, their says, developers. Yeah, uh, you'll conference. be able to install a public preview version of Windows eight point one in late June. So I'm sure they'll make uh, I'm sure they'll make good on that promise. I'm just interested in seeing what are they going to do, and I think they could. And I, now I'll be honest with you, I've I've played with eight RT. I haven't played with eight on a PC as much. They need to have some tighter integration points. They're going to need to have some new services. Maybe you'll see a lot more with Surface. Or, I'm sorry, the Glass. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to come out right after they announce the new Xbox. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to... I, I think they're going to aim to take over your, your living room. Hopefully, they're paying attention to what some of the other vendors have been doing. And I think it's on the Android devices. You're seeing, you're seeing the IR port make a comeback. Really? Because people are realizing, oh, I could use my tablet to control my entire home theater. Okay. Or I can use my phone. And there's been, I know there's been add-ons for like the iPhone mm -hmm. to, that, that that will turn into a remote. And I have, I have, I use the Harmony Link. Mm -hmm. So I have a device that's connected to my Wi-Fi that my phone then connects to and it retransmits um, what I press. And it, it'll auto-configure, it'll switch from my Xbox to my Blu-ray player to, to whatever. So I think they're I, I think they need to make a run for the living room, and I think I'll be I'll be surprised if Google doesn't mention something in that realm. Apple expands on their on their type of living room interfaces. Uh, what Philips released the Hue, mm -hmm. it's lighting. Um, I, I think Microsoft needs to move forward and and really tie together their platforms and also take it past like we were talking about I'm, I'm no longer sitting at a computer typing a word document yeah i'm sitting on my couch watching tv that whole idea like we were talking about the ipad and the and the mobility right like they need to do that crossover yeah they need to get that crossover going and and based on the fact that you know they're creating their own hardware now mm -hmm. they're they're investing last i heard they were trying to invest in dell as they start to go private um they have their their phones. They have their agreements with Nokia. They have the new Xbox coming. I mean, Intel Haswell's coming out. So there's a lot of change for them right yeah. now. So I mean, and especially like on on the on the verge of like all the bad news coming from the PC industry. Uh, so this this is this is you know kind of high stakes for them right now. So yeah, yeah I think they're launching a new phone coming up, mm -hmm. which I'm sure. Will, and they're talk, already talking about the next iteration or update to the the Windows Phone. Mm -hmm. and, and if they don't do something now, I, I, I mean, I honestly think they could, maybe not for the business mm -hmm. per se, but in, in the personal world, I could see them becoming a BlackBerry. Yeah. I mean, why do I need to go out and buy their products? Uh, what do you think, uh, Chachi, um, <laughs> Satan, uh, about the direction of Windows? <laughs> They want your soul. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the hands didn't go in front of the mustache. No, no um, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't know how to read that. It does not know how to do that. Um, so. Okay, uh, you had another Microsoft uh, uh, story you stuck in here. Uh, uh, Microsoft now lets G chat with your friends with uh, Outlook.com and SkyDrive.com, which. It, we, yeah, we were talking about this a little bit earlier yeah. before the show. Yeah, Microsoft's really. Google said, "You know what? We're not going to let you. We're going to. We're not going to let you use Active Sync to sync your mail anymore." And so Microsoft answered back and said, "Fine, come to Outlook.com. 
we'll just import all your Gmail as it comes in. Which is an interesting, <laughs> like, response. So it's not a, fine, you won't play with us, we won't play with you. It's like, we added a feature because you took one away. Right. Which we don't usually get that. Which shows how valuable Google is to Microsoft right now. What and and uh, Scroogle this. I, I'm I'm going through it at work too. Even looking at how do you implement corporate mail on an Android device without having to jump through hoops and go to a dish, going past additional third parties. <laughs> <laughs> we both look over in this, and it's not sticking to his head. Um, it, it froze up. It's also I found a, I found a random button. <laughs> It's a, it's like a slot machine. You pull the thing, and it'll go through and pick three random parts, <laughs> and that's what it came up uh, with. This is this is a preview of how the po- this, everybody's every every episode this week is going to be like this. It, it, it's a party under the sea, and I, I find it interesting because I could see this being a really good thing for Apple because mm. Apple's saying, you know what, Google, you want to create all your apps and bring them over to our device. You give us Google Search with Google Now. You get you keep. Throw, um, throw any Google app. Give us a Google Drive app. We'll, we'll put it on an Apple device. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. We'll authorize it. And then they're saying to Microsoft, you know what? You want to create a SkyDrive app? You want to create an Outlook app? You want? We'll sync your mail. Yeah. We'll we'll do it all. So while, while Microsoft and Google are over here duking it out, and and Microsoft and BlackBerry are, are trying to hit third play, who see who can take third. I, I could see Apple just sitting back saying, uh, we already have a user population. If, you, if you're a Microsoft person, board, you can board our platform. If you're a Google person, you can board our platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have, just come over to our platform and you don't have to deal with this not working or that not working or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I could see that really working out for them. Mm-hmm. Where, where maybe they haven't had a grandiose new product offering in, in a year or two. Who cares? Because they run everything that everyone runs. It's the best of all worlds. And and they want to, you know, they don't necessarily need to be wowing everybody because most of the people with Microsoft especially are people who have been using it for how long, and it's the thing that works. It's the thing that's there, Mm -hmm. you know. And we're starting to see that now with Google, I think, too, um, or in in, in certain instances, Apple. Uh, But... uh, I think it's all I need in most of those cases. So they're cornering, they're making sure they're shoring up that part of their market. It was interesting because the, with the RT tablet, I, I I was really waiting for Microsoft to do something to let me get my Google account or get multiple Google calendars to sync. Mm-hmm. So I, you only get your primary calendar in Gmail to sync with the mail client. Yeah. Well, not only did they not get multiple calendars to sync, then Google took sync away, so now I get, I get nothing, on the device. So I, I mean, you can use other clients, you can use different things, but I, I don't know. It, it's going to be an interesting war that it sounds like Apple, even Apple and Microsoft, kind of got together and said, you know what, we're going to come to an agreement that we're not going to sue each other like all the lawsuits with Samsung. Yeah, uh, it could it could be an interesting future for for the four of them. Uh, somebody else with interesting, let's see where this future goes. BlackBerry had a big uh, uh, conference today uh, announcing some new stuff. Um, I know one of the biggest things is the addition of BBM is going to be coming soon to iOS and Android as well, is it? Yeah, and that's another interesting thing. So one of the big things about having a BlackBerry device was you got BBM. Yeah. And you were part of this huge network of people that you could chat with. Well, I, I have, without paying for SMS. Right, without paying for SMS. It was iMessage, but five yeah. years, six years ago. Yeah. And it was interesting because everyone I work with, they were like, oh, you got to get a BlackBerry so you can get on BBM. Now all those people that actually stuck it out and have a BlackBerry, they have like two friends left on BBM. <laughs> Meanwhile, they used to have like over 100 yeah. people. Now yeah. they're bringing it to the platform. But so it doesn't, it no longer differentiates their device. And they're paying for an infrastructure to keep this chat technology going, and they're not getting anything from all the iOS and Android users. Mm-hmm. So, wait, 
I don't understand where this play. Well, it seems came to be from. exactly that. It's like, well, at least we can still sell the infrastructure to the people that still have them. And oh, look, what well, we look, we support this, so we know we're losing all this, but you can still use use our infrastructure. I mean, if 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 you as a company, you're like, well, why the hell do we still have this? You know. It, it really feels like a. Uh, it, it, I don't see any new installs based on this, you know. Yeah, I mean, no companies could uh, people care less. Yeah. All it's doing is bridging the gap for the people that still have a BlackBerry. That really seems to be the thing. I mean, like you know, you're you, you know, for those companies where where the the president still swears by BlackBerry, even though we let everybody else go whatever they wanted to do. Um, or maybe it should. It, maybe it's a key into their embrace to change because one of the things that you'll you're able to do. Or you will be able to do at greater extent, extent and depth, is um, the BlackBerry servers will allow you to manage Android and, and Apple mm -hmm. devices. Mm -hmm. And aren't they still key for security? They are still key for security, but I think it was the Pentagon approved Samsung devices a week or two ago. Yeah, and I think this week they're they're finalizing but that's Apple. Still the back so, end then, right? I mean, we're still talking about like that communication on the back end that's hosted by the company. Mm -hmm. And you're using B BlackBerry services. So that's what they're shoring up. But, and that's probably more money than what they're making off the phones. Yeah, because they're they're moving the the phones used to be if you wanted to connect to a back end corporate network, it was depending on your negotiations, but it was I think retailed at $100 per license mm -hmm. and you that it was it. It was like buy an office. Yeah. Now they're going. Guess where they're going? Subscription model. It's. It's. I. I think it's going to start at twelve dollars a year and work its way up mm. in the future. Chachi, I think your company is is going to a bring your own device method from from a BlackBerry centric kind of situation. Uh, uh, what What does the king uh, think about the, the the future of BlackBerry? You think you're going to see uh, this bridge uh, work in your situation? No. Um... BlackBerry screwed up. Yeah. Um, they, uh, with the release of the Z10, they required a release or a new uh, BlackBerry management server. Oh, so you have to upgrade anywhere. This, this, this yeah, is more than just patchwork. Yeah, this is, you need a, a, a whole new uh, BlackBerry management server in order to uh, even support the Z10. And they, yeah. they, they completely left. The, not only do you need the new BlackBerry server, they they've gone to an Active Sync protocol. So you need to turn on Active Sync in your environment. They have an additional connector piece that you have Active to install. Sync, which isn't supported by Google anymore. <laughs> so, but BlackBerry, that's doing... where they're going. But but BlackBerry, <laughs> BlackBerry's filling the gap that Google left behind. So I have to yes. Google. Sorry. I presume we just scored. Um, yeah, I, I thought I was muted. <laughs> so is it one nothing? It is one nothing. Excellent, excellent. Uh, take take, take that, Dalton Castle. Two minutes in. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so there's that. Of course, tomorrow we're going to get Google stuff. I don't even. There's like maybe some rumors. I don't know. Um, well, it'll be interesting since one guy is going to have a lot to talk about between Google OS, or, I'm sorry, Chrome OS and Android since he's ahead of both of them now. Um, word, the word is, and by the time anybody listens to this, all this is probably going to be out anyways, right? Uh, the word is this is going to be more uh, software-centric than not so much hardware. Uh, that there, there may, may not be much. That we got to have Google Glass stuff. I think we have an announcement on what's next for Google Glass. Yeah, I Maybe I find out if that tweet is real, and I'll be able to get my Google Glass here soon. I think you're going to have a new Nexus tablet. I don't think you're going to have a, a new uh, Nexus phone. Really? Which I actually, I think that's what I'm hearing as far as rumor. Yeah. And I actually personally think it should be reversed. Yeah. Because correct me if I'm wrong, the Nexus does not support LTE. Yes. And I think that was a huge mistake. Yes. So, I would rather see that flipped, but I think you're going to see. What about what about the what about the return of the cube? I keep hearing about. I, I've heard that. I've right. heard. I mean, every, I think you told me about it. Then I started seeing the rumblings. Like I, I think you're going to see them take a run for the 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 um, living room market, just the like cube Microsoft is back, what? and it's going to be your next Xbox. Was it the cube or the Q? The Q? I, I think know. it was the Q. Q. And it was a sphere. Yes. But yes. before that came the Logitech review, 
which was a pass-through TV device. Yes, yeah, so which was a Google. That was like four hundred dollars. That was Google TV. Yeah, 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 and that that failed. Um, but in the meantime, Android is making it in the living room uh, potentially because we have Ouya, we have GameStick, we have uh, there's oh the. Um, uh, the NVIDIA one that we mentioned um, uh, on, on the Twitters, that, that insert coin I'm sure we'll have more about. Um, so, I mean, that that, that is kind of happening. We'll see what happens with those guys. You know what? I was interested. I, I, I'm i not a huge commercial person. I, I DVR and I fast forward, but I'm also a cord cutter. Yeah. And one of the interesting things, I, I, I was watching commercials the other night because I really wanted to see the Marvel Shield commercial. Mm-hmm. And I, I caught it, so I hit play and watched through that and there was a samsung commercial and samsung is now integrating it looked like from the commercial you could talk into your remote and it must have had a webcam because it was reading hand gestures yep yeah uh then i've been seeing commercials for that too where it's like the samsung tvs but it's like that connect motion kind of situation Mm -hmm. Uh, i was like well that's interesting and gimmicky and who's really going to do that and i'm sure judging by how well like like a hulu or netflix works on like a samsung tv like from people i know that have had those i'm sure this function is going to be great (laughs) well it was funny because i actually got I, i recently got a new samsung tv and they actually gave me a free keyboard with integrated mouse the keyboard has an infrared sensor on it, so I can completely control everything from their oh, geez. Samsung keyboard. Oh, jeez. But, no, but it makes me question, so if Android is open source, as we know it, do you think Samsung will actually take the steps to do something like Amazon did? And kind of close it up and say, this is going to be ROS. We're going to sit over here. We may run We may run Android at the core. Because they're kind of doing it with the way they're pitching Samsung safe and their security protocols. They, they have, have an alternate so mail many, client. They have so many apps when you get that Galaxy these days, right? Mm-hmm. Well, now, again, the Sam, they're saying they're claiming the S4. They, they pulled a Windows RT. Mm-hmm. You get a 16 gig device, you get 8, eight gig to work with. We're, we're, we're loading 8 gig of our own side-loaded crap over here. And and they, they guess what? Their devices support ActiveSync because mm-hmm. they put an ActiveSync mail client on their devices. Mm-hmm. I mean, are we going to see where Samsung tries to port Android to their TVs? Because now they have a play market yeah. where they don't have to write their own apps. I mean, my I, I was impressed. My my TV is, is a dual-core processor. In the TV, <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. So, so I mean, and it's fast. It's snappy. But are there a- there's apps? I really haven't gotten to play with them a lot. But I-, I could really see them. They they could answer what maybe Google can't out of the box mm-hmm. by having the TV, having a phone that can speak to that TV stream. That kind of content. Isn't, wait, 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 wait. Didn't we have... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't this something like Sony kept saying like a few months ago when they were trying to rebuild and they fired a president or something? Like we wanted to have our... They were trying to rebuild that Sony brand because it used to be you bought Sony everything, right? Mm-hmm. Now we don't really... Sony's in it's there, right? Uh, but now you get that idea that you get your Sony PlayStation that talks to your Sony TV. So this is what this is Samsung doing that same play. Mm-hmm. Um, and Apple says just buy our little Android. box. Buy our little box and all your devices will talk to your TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like that's the that's the funnel that everything mm-hmm. goes through. Which we, we see that with something like the Roku. This is how you get your internet to the TV. Because not everybody's gonna buy an internet TV, you know. Um, I think people are still I I you know I think we're getting out of that because of all this feature richness. But people, you know, I don't get a new TV until one dies. That one's sitting over there, uh, you know. Um, and and uh, God, how many TVs I got I, I, that they're still around after ten years, you know? But could Samsung just make a little box? 
Here, throw yeah. a little box on your TV. Yeah. Hey, those really cool TVs that we're making. Here's a box that does the same thing. Right. And and I think I think they're stepping more and more towards it. I'm with you on that. They're they're definitely going their own direction. They're definitely not walking the Google path as closely anymore. Um, I think it's it is only a matter of time before they do that. Uh, a Kindle thing. Now, I wonder if it may be something like a certain relationship with Google that they're not doing that yet. Well, and I think it is because someone, some I was reading a blog post and I can't remember where it was at, but it was saying that Google's really trying to get behind the LGs and, and some of the other major manufacturers to really try to push them forward because they see what Samsung's doing to the Google name. Like it, it's the Samsung. It's almost well, like yes, Samsung they're taking it away. OS. They're taking yeah. it away. That, 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 and that's exactly what Amazon was kind of promising, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, Samsung Galaxy. Well, remember for the longest time, Android phones were droids. Right. To everybody. That, that was your Nintendos. Video games were Nintendo. And, uh, Android phones are droids. Now, that finally, because I hated that. I hated that so bad uh, that Verizon took that over, right? It wasn't even Motorola or anybody. It was Verizon that was mm -hmm. renaming everything a droid and doing those commercials that creep, freak out. Um, what's that? I said droid. <laughs> okay. That's what the commercial said. It was nothing but that. Yeah, it wasn't fun. <laughs> um, it was a it was a dark dark time for Android, wasn't it? Um, so and now now it's a cuddly robot, and now it's it's Galaxy. The Galaxy phones, mm -hmm. and they've done a really good job at that. They've really done a good job at marketing those things. When they redid, didn't they just redo their even their laptop name? Really, they used to have like the Series Five, the Series Nine, the Series this, and then they had the Eight of Eight ATIV. <laughs> They're also it. one of the manufacturers that has a Google uh, Chrome OS. Mm -hmm. the, so, oh, I saw a commercial for that too. The the Chrome the Chromebook from from Google. But it's made by Samsung. Okay, and then I've seen Google ads for the Chromebook. Mm -hmm. um, they're not. I don't think they were as fun of ones that where they were throwing them in the in the lake. Okay, I, I like that. Ad. I didn't. I didn't see that. That ad. was one of the first ones where Chrome OS came out, where they're like, it was like one of those kind of online kind of videos they did for it, where they're like, look, everything's on there and everything works, and it's all the stuff you can use anywhere else. And if you throw it in a lake, you just get a new one, and everything's still there. <laughs> You didn't lose your stuff. Like that was one of their actual pitches: was you know, throw it in, in in a pool or something, and your your stuff is still there, uh, which is one of the cool things. Is it's it's cloud based. That, that's the whole idea, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't care if this desk catches on fire, other than the money. Uh, but all this, I didn't lose, you know, the show notes. I didn't lose all of my stuff. It's all up in the cloud somewhere, you know. Um, and that's a really cool like kind of promise of the future, you know. So. All right, on that note, Chachi. Woof. As Chachi discovers Google Hangout. <laughs> I can't help it. It's fun. Jeez. Chachi, you're at insertcointobegin.com. Things are happening there? Yep, I try to post at least two stories every day. Excellent. So. And Let's Play yeah. is still going? Yep. On right after this. Yes. On the Sorgatron Media Network. Your doggy's getting a little awkward there. Yeah, it started freezing up. I think, I think, well, it's also getting darker, so it's probably having trouble tracking uh, your That's head. That's true. So, uh, and Chilla, he's at Chilla on the Twitters. What's up? Hey, PSA, real quick, public service announcement. Put a password on your devices, please. I please. I don't. You don't. Now here's don't, my point. Like just, bother. just real I quick, like, and I and I don't, I don't like bugging. I don't want to go it. crazy it's just a about pain this. In the butt. But it, someone, I mean, someone said, "I lost my phone." Okay, so they lost their phone. There's no password on it. So now they have their Facebook. They have access to their Facebook. They have access to everything. What? But then, but wait a minute. But if your mail account's on there, that's tied to everything else, you could do password. You could send password resets everywhere. And you have complete control of everything. Put a password on your device. such a pain in the butt. Make bus. it one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I lost my phone, I'm going to log in and wipe it remotely. 
uh, and but how people that I mean, how many people actually know how to do? No. That? Okay, so it's okay for me because like it's I, okay for you I have, because you I have a a it's contain, I have a destruct button and I'm w- fully aware of the destruct button. <laughs> and if I've lost my phone, I'm going to get to the nearest internet device, which I'm surrounded by ten of them right now, <laughs> um, and go self destruct that thing. And and that's I good. I am able to delete my data with a push of a button. And the passcode, and uh, there's a couple more well, holes, yeah. but you've been just a couple buttons. But uh, but still, I mean, but, but at least you, I, you have how a plan. long? How long? Like for me, I, you know, security guy, how long would it take for me to say, "Crap, I don't have my phone." Crap, I really don't have my phone. Crap, I don't know where my phone is. Oh, there's my phone in a cemetery. Um, it, right. It, I mean, uh, but I think that's uh, that, that's a good thing. But uh, I think for the average person, that's not gonna. They're it's gonna say we. Well, that's not aware of it, or they. Well, yeah, I put find my iPhone on my phone, but I don't know how to use it from a PC. <laughs> Which I mean, they don't they, explain that. They don't. They explain don't explain that. that. There is nowhere on anywhere that it said like maybe if you had a tablet, mm-hmm. if you had a, 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 another tablet, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be too bad. Mm-hmm. But not many people are going to know how to boot up their no, Windows they, machine. They don't know how to go to iCloud.com and mm-hmm. then they can do that whole thing. Yeah, so I I guess just PSA real quick. I don't care if it's 1111 or 1234, which is the common Now, one thing on I luggage. do like about Android is you have, like, you can, your unlock can be a pattern. Pattern. And that's that can be your code. Oh, well, just wait. They're, today they're, they're saying they're switching. The, the iPhone's going to get, you're getting rid of your button. It's it's no longer gonna be a push button. It's gonna be capacitive touch like your screen, and it's gonna be a fingerprint scanner. It's no button. It's no, it's gonna be a button, but it won't push. <laughs> oh no! It, well, it, you know that is one of the things, the few things that stops working. Right. My and top. That's why they're I replaced this phone because my top button stopped working a, a couple months ago. No like more button. Easter Easter morning, I wake up and 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 and, the, the bunny and took zombie your Jesus took away my button button. Uh, but they're saying that'll be a fingerprint scanner. Okay. So you'll by by touching the button down the by touching where the button is down there, it'll be capacitive. So it'll it'll read the fact that you touched it. That'd be cool. It'll fingerprint scan. No, no need. I for, like the idea. Oh, we're still going long on this. Part. Sorry. Uh, I like the idea that came up today. Uh, Annie Anako said this on Mac Break, where I like the idea that uh, you put a thing on the back of it that's like that, where you pass your iPad to somebody else in the family, and now it's their iPad. Because of the scanner on the back, like that was a that was a really mm-hmm. cool idea. I heard. I don't think they'll do that. Well, I would love to see them do multiple accounts on an iPad. You know, then you know, then my wife and I can start fighting over them again. Mm-hmm. Like here you go, you know, or 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 wouldn't that be great if it was just a cloud based kind of account thing on your iPads? And I do just pick up her iPad, and now it's my account. When I, I Google's gonna, I think that could be something you're gonna see from Google real, real Google, soon because I mean, Google started yeah, down that Google's path. Google's not very game. far from that to begin with, right. and it's one of the cool things about what Android does. But you know, I, I think that's something cool Android could do too. And Android's been getting a lot of cloud people, I believe. Or I'm sorry, uh, iPhone, Apple's been hiring a lot of cloud people lately. I think. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, with that, guys, this is the awesome cast. We've had some great talks today. Um, of course, check us out live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I've been I've been you for a while, apparently. Um, <laughs> so, um, Google Plus, Facebook as well. I didn't even get Nero was commenting on. Uh, uh, we didn't even get to a story about um, about cutting the cord today with John McCain. So go over, go see what that conversation is over on Google Plus. He has some great stuff to say about that. Uh, uh, and then maybe we'll have a discussion on there about new new Gingrich not understanding what a cell phone is and needs your help. Uh, stuff we could not get into the show, but we had a great conversations. Thanks, Chilla. Thanks, uh, Chachi, and all of his many faces. Uh, thank you for our awesome chat room, including uh, Juggalo John, Tonio, WrestleFan, and Bobby, and Brother Sorg, as, uh, of course. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.